Well, Doss is getting ready to play ball. Valdosta, everyone's hyped up. I'm Malia Thomas, your neighborhood reporter in Valdosta, and check out why Lowndes and Valdosta High School are getting their heads in a game for next week's Wintersville game. Keeping you safe in the Rose City. I'm Candace Blake, your Thomasville neighborhood reporter, and coming up, I'll show you how a new camera system is designed to help keep public transit safe. Not your average moving day. I'm Alberto Camargo in College Town, where locals are getting used to a new neighbor, one with decades of Tallahassee's black history. What they have to say about the project. It's a construction site thousands drive past every day in northeast Tallahassee. Potential new zoning changes has many people wondering, what's the plan? I'm Kendall Brandt, your neighborhood reporter in Northeast Tallahassee, and after driving past this construction site myself, I decided to dig into it. Terry Cleland has wondered about the project on the corner of Ox Bottom and Thomasville Road since 2018. This was in 2018. They wanted to rezone open space into commercial. And it was, so it's a huge change. And it would have involved taking down all of the trees on that property. Years later, with the trees gone and the land rezoned. I, I found the rezoning notice when I was out for a walk in the neighborhood. Um, it's not very well advertised. Terry asked the city for that new rezoning request. She shared those documents with me. The developer, Ox Bonham Thomasville LLC, is asking the city to allow a gas station and fast food restaurant on the property. Currently, that is not allowed in District 4. Cleland says that fast food and gas stations are not in that list of the commercial possibilities. It's because of the kind of use that, that they bring, and it's high volume, high traffic. I reached out to Justin Gasvini, a manager on the project. While he did not go on camera for an interview, he says there are not yet set plans for businesses on that space. Although no plans are final, rezoning in that area could open the door for businesses like another fast food restaurant or something else entirely different. To get a better perspective, I spoke with Slayton Murray, a commercial real estate expert with NAI Telcor. Particularly with that side of town, there's not a lot of gas stations north of I-10. So once you get up near the Walmart up there, uh, you know, there aren't a lot of options. He says the boom in residential development will bring more commercial with it. That's probably why you're seeing a demand of, you know, more commercial development uh, heading to that northeast mm -hmm. part of town just to follow that single family home growth. I just want people to be informed. Cleland posted the information online to get people involved with the planning of their community. When the bulldozers come, it's too late to start protesting. City leaders are looking into those proposed changes in November. If you've got concerns about something you see in Northeast Tallahassee, I want to know about it. Contact me via the phone number and email address on your screen, and I'll look into it for you. In Northeast Tallahassee, Kendall Brandt, ABC 27. There's a push to give a stretch of North Monroe a bit of an update. I'm Mayor Sargent, your neighborhood reporter in Northwest Tallahassee. I talked to one business owner about the need for improvements that will hopefully drive his new business. The City Commission has unanimously decided Blueprint can apply for the Florida Beautification Grant. Here's how this will help you. The city would invest $12,100 annually to plant and maintain trees and flowers along part of the North Monroe Corridor between John Knox Road and Allen Road. It's part of the city's priorities to improve quality of life and economic development. To help those like Stephen Flynn. He's the owner of the Getaway Grill and Bar, just off North Monroe Street. His restaurant has been open for about four and a half months. He wanted to create a welcoming place where people could enjoy themselves. He says the city's decision to improve part of the North Monroe Corridor will help him do that. Because it, obviously we want it to be inviting uh, for businesses like ourselves who are, uh, you know, in our case, just starting out. You know, we want people to be able to make this trip and say, oh, well, this is, you know, a nice looking area. But he also says most of his clients are local, so he hopes the investment will improve safety in the area as well. Not only do I want my family safe, but I want my neighbors to be safe as well. Next steps will see Blueprint submit a grant application to the Florida Department of Transportation. I spoke to a representative from Blueprint who told me they plan to submit this application by October 2nd. In downtown Tallahassee, I'm Mayor Sargent, ABC 27. Putting you first and your safety. 
I'm Candace Blake, your Thomasville neighborhood reporter, and new cameras are planned for public safety. I think that's a wonderful idea. I mean, cameras on bus systems have proven useful in a multitude of ways. That's how Patty Smith says she feels about adding cameras to buses in the Thomasville area. She owns this record store in the city of Roses. Transit leaders tell me it's all about... Safety is first. Security is first. Thomas County Transit Director Corey McGee tells me that those cameras will record the entire time the buses are in use. At least four cameras will be installed in each of the 16 buses in their fleet. So who pays for it? I asked them that question. McGee told me that the money comes from the Thomas County's annual transit grant totaling $1.2 million. The people that we transport has to have or need to have um, safety and security of getting to where they need to be. While some may have concerns about too many cameras in too many places, when I stopped by Smith's store, she told me... Cameras are everywhere, and I think that would only help to ensure safety, to give clues were something to go awry. The surveillance cameras will be installed both in and out of the bus and on wheelchair lifts. The system moves more than 4,000 riders monthly. While McGee tells me no incidents led to the camera decision, they're still working. Basically being proactive um, to, to our citizens, for our citizens, uh, to make sure that um, they are safe because... An idea Smith says she can get behind. I think we're being watched much more than we even realize, but having it on the bus is still for the good. County leaders say that people can expect to see new cameras by the end of the year. Your Thomasville neighborhood reporter, Candace Blake, ABC 27. An important piece of Tallahassee history getting the care it needs to be around for decades to come. I'm Alberto Camargo in College Town here on Whale Street near FAMU Way where this house was relocated from its original location about one and a half miles away. I spoke to locals in the neighborhood about the new addition. Just down the street on the corner of Wales and Diston, I met Kyle Johnson, a local comedian who also works near FAMU. Uh, I run a uh, C-store convenience store at okay. night for the kids to um, come and buy food. He's originally from Philadelphia, but has lived in Tallahassee for 30 years and on Whale Street for five. He wasn't aware of the project until I walked him through it. Kyle says bringing this kind of significant local history to his area will benefit future generations. I know of it, but I would like to learn more. You know, like I say, bring my grandkids up and let them see that we have, you know, some history here right next door to the house. This house, built in 1910, was one of two belonging to Willis Giles, one of Tallahassee's first black entrepreneurs. The preservation project, named Save the Historic Giles Houses, wants to turn the homes into a museum to preserve part of the capital city's black history, alongside the former home of the Reverend King Solomon DuPont. DuPont was a local civil rights movement leader and a pastor at Greater Fountain Chapel AME Church. Project organizer Max Epstein says this location is not yet finalized, but it is historically significant. We hope to keep them here in this area, this block, near the Reverend's home and the church because it will create uh, a destination for folks. For locals like Kyle, the possibility of a historic site so close to his front door makes him even prouder to have moved to the city. I, I love being here. Tallahassee is my home now, um, and I'm looking forward to great things in the future here in Tallahassee, especially starting with this. The second Giles house is scheduled to be moved next door to this one on Thursday morning. In College Town, I'm Alberto Camargo, ABC 27. The game may not be until next week, but the hype is just getting started. I'm Malia Thomas, a neighbor reporter for Valdosta, and I'm here at the Baser Hydemore Stadium, which will be host to the epic Wildcats versus Valdosta Wintersville Classic game. Ball is life. The school spirit has already taken over Valdosta senior Jay Ball. He tells me that the anticipation for next Friday's game is all he can focus on. Man, I've been a diehard Wildcat fan since I was born. I went to every game when I was born. Uh, my parents became Wildcats fans because of me, because I like them so much. The Wildcats versus Vikings Wintersville Classic game has a long storied history in Valdosta. Since the introduction of the Classic in the early 80s, Valdosta holds the 25-20 advantage in their 45 run-ins with Lowndes. 
While Lyle shut out Valdosta in the previous three seasons before 2022, last year the tide turned back in Valdosta's favor with them winning their last matchup. While Lyle's coming from their first losing season since 1994, the pressure is on. That's why Paris Jackson, junior at Lowndes High School, is helping his football team through his work as an athletic trainer. So, like, if there are any injuries, I usually be the one to treat them. And, like, for, like, turf burn or any injury. They when Valdosta hosting the game on their home turf this year, they have the home court advantage. Something Jay tells me will be key in their victory. Well, I can speak for my seniors. This is our last year, and we want to win bad. So... We're hyping up this uh, players. Despite the rivalry, both Lounge and Valdosta are keeping it friendly. It's just a fun place to be. Go Cats. Tickets are on sale at the Wildcat Ticket Office. I'm Malia Thomas, your neighborhood reporter in Valdosta, ABC 27.